Where do you reckon it would have been, Rondo, if, if you never did music? I'd be in jail. I'd be in jail, Storm. 100,000%. Dead or in jail, I can't lie. You right, Rondo, how are you? Rest, bro. Rondo, could you tell me where you was born and what your childhood was like, please? I was born in Homerland Hospital in Hackney. Uh, grew up there. I'd see clothes from when I was born to when I was around. I got to that year three. I went to school in Hackney. Got kicked out in Hackney. Ended up going to Leon. Got kicked out of there. Ended up having to move to Essex, Dagenham sides. Got kicked out of there. And then boom, from there it was just, just outside. So. Why was you getting kicked out so much? But what was happening? Uh, mostly facts. I can't lie, mostly facts. Um, disrupting classes and shit like that. Minor things like, minor things for, first reason, first time I got kicked out of school, the one in year three, that was for, I sprayed bleach cleaner at someone's face. In, in year three? Out. Yeah, by them times that was a little, man. I don't know, I don't know, it was that deep, yeah, so. Just playing about, spray them, it went in his eye, he started moving mad, and <laughs> then boom. He just came out that. He said, yeah, love. And that was, yeah, free as well. And then when I left there, I ended up going to um, Downsall in Leighton from year three to year six. Then in year six, I got kicked out again. Play fighting, some dumb shit. Then from the time I got kicked out of year six, they just kept me off education until I got to like year seven. Then that's when I went to mainstream secondary. And then I ended up getting kicked out of year seven. And then from there, it was just units, crews and units all the way for like three years. And then I ended up getting jail. Why do you think, Rondo, you was getting kicked out so much? Because, you know, it's just like... I'd basically just built up that reputation of being a troublemaker. So it's like, any little thing I was doing, they were on man. To get it straight away, they were just on man. So it was just one of them ones, man. And what area did you grow up in? I grew up... Initially, I grew up in Hackney until I moved to Leighton. And then I grew up in there. And stuff. What age did you move to Leighton? I moved to there when I was like, just like eight years old, seven years old. And what, what's life like in Leighton? It's a rare, you know. I can't lie. It was growing up in Leighton. It was, it was good still. Like it was, it was quiet. Like I didn't really see anything mad going on. It was a nice area. You get. It was good to go, storm. And I guess, when did things almost turn left and when did you start to jump on road? When I first, first, first ever got sent to, to jail. It wasn't really jail, it was like just below Young Offenders when I got sent to STC. What's STC? It's like, it's like jail before you're allowed to go jail, if you get it. This was when I was like 12 years old. 12 years old? Yeah. Got found with some, some drugs. At 12? Yeah. Then they put me on tag. At then I breached the tag. You was so, on tag at 12? Yeah. I was on the tag for years. I was on tag for years from when I was like, I would say from when I was like 11, you know. They had me on tag until, for like two years, but they sent me STC during the tag. So then when I came back out, they put me back on tag. Why were you on tag and what, what, what were the rules around the tag? Well, because basically, like, I was one of them ones growing up. Like, I used to be, I used to always go missing and that. Like, I would just keep it moving, you get it? So it was like, if 
first it was a missing thing, like, I would do, like, the feds would just grab me, pit me yard and that. And then, boom, when I started getting, like, when they were coming to grab me, when I started getting found with stuff on me, they will come, they will find drugs on me, right, right, right. Then, boom, that's when it was, like, cool. That's when they started playing, like, I was basically in the system from then, yeah. It's crazy to most people, I guess, that a 12-year-old would have drugs on them. Yeah, literally. How have you ended up at 12 carrying drugs? Like, how's that, how's that happened? Because that's, that's definitely not normal. No, it's not so. Uh, obviously, at that point, like, to me, it was, do you get it? At that point, like, I didn't have nothing else. Like, it was one of them ones, like, I was just a bored kid, do you get it? So it's like, I used to just be outside, selling whatever, whatever. And that's when I first started, like, being part of what I am now. If you catch my drift, do you get it? So it's like, it was all new to man, like, I literally just started, do you get it? So, to the outside perspective, it wouldn't look normal. It wouldn't look as normal, but to me, it was like, that was my life at that point, do you get it? And how did you end up in that situation in the first place? Like, because obviously, being 12 year old and having drugs, so someone older has got, to, has got to give you them, surely? Mm, yeah, obviously, you know how it gets, like, you get it. it was just one of them ones. Surely, I guess the person whoever spoke to you and gave you those drugs should have known better, man. You're twelve. Yeah, you could say that. I mean, even if even if you're asking your twelve years old man, who in their right mind would give a twelve year old drugs? Even if it's to but sell. Then, but you know what it is. You have to see it as uh, cool. If you're seeing the same twelve year old, if this is your life, if that's your life, you're doing whatever you shot drugs, whatever, yeah. And you see a 12 year old on your strip every day with not doing nothing, just they are gallivanting on road. Like, oh, me personally, I would chat to the youth and see what's good and you get it. So it was just like one of them ones you get. It. And at that point in time, you're forgetting that man's 12 as well. So it's like, man, ain't got no job. I'm not doing education. Like, at that point, imagine that it was the best thing for a man. It wasn't the best thing for a man, obviously, but for a man, it was like the only thing you get. And then what did you go on to do next? So you, you came out of the, what was it, STC? And yeah, I came out of the STC, just doing what I was doing, just used ways to be around, move from store market. Literally, that was my life. I got to the point where I was like 15. Then, yeah, that's when things just started. That's when everything started changing. So, when you said changing, what do you mean? That's when a lot of things happened in my life that I would say made me who I am today. Do you get it? What happened? Tell me. I ended up going to jail for like three and a half years. At 15? Yeah. I lost my nigga. Like, Talk to me about that. Obviously, it's just, it was one of them, obviously, I lost my boy, he got stabbed. He was stabbed when he was like 17. And at that point, it's like, at that point, before he died, like, there was no, it, like, it wasn't what you see now, like. How you see, let's say, the whole of Marley Strip, like, I would be real. it wouldn't be where it was today. If it wasn't for the fact that I lost my nigga the year. Rondo, for the people who don't know what the Marley Strip is, what, what is that? It's a family. Literally, it's a family. That's all it is, like, everyone, everyone, us lot, we never came up with all of that. London's most dangerous and that. We never done all of that. The police done that. We've never said anything to do with you get it. We always said it's a family. That's what it is. You get it. Everyone around, man, anyone that says Marley Strip, they're not part of no gang. Man. They're just some of brothers, you get it. Because I'm assuming the police obviously refer to it as a gang. Yeah, they're trying to. I don't know what they're on. Literally. When was it? When did the Marley Strip, when was it created? I couldn't even tell you. I don't even know. She is before my time. I don't know. Yeah. It's one of them. You know how family is, man. You can't ask when a family started. 
Literally. But I just want to, again, touch back on your friend and the situation there. Did you witness what happened? Yeah. It was one of the, like, literally, I literally just left him, big split or not. And in like five minutes, we're going to leave him and we got a phone call, innit? Like, everything was just, yeah. everything that day was just, it was just so quick. Like, I just, it was just, everything was a blur, I can't lie. And when you got that phone call, Rondo, what, what was your initial reaction? What happened? And what was said? Obviously, the phone call I received wasn't that either had been stabbed or anything. It was just something had happened. Do you get it? So I never, the last thing I assumed was, was that I thought it was probably like, it was just one of them ones. Someone's probably pulled up or something or something. You get it? So, but then when man actually gone back to where man was, I'd seen the ambulance. I'd seen, like, it looked, it didn't look like, the time that man left to the time man came back, so much, it looked like so much had happened in such a short amount of time that like, it didn't make sense to me. By the time man got back, there was already tape, there was already the feds, like, man's gone to the, when I've gone to the scene of where it actually happened, man's gone there a couple of man's people. Then when man's looked inside, and that's when I just seen him. Like. I seen him on the floor. And obviously, like, yeah, the girls. I seen him trying to save him and that one. You get it. Just them on one. That must be a traumatic experience, yeah, massively traumatic. Especially at 15 years old. That's, that's no 15, no, no, well, not your average 15 year old is going to witness that, are they? Mm -hmm. and, and that surely would take its toll and I guess sh shape your mindset and I guess your, your, your future to some degree. Yeah, it did. Yeah. How do you reckon it affected you? It made me who I am today, but yeah, I'll be wrong. Like, there wouldn't be no run though if it wasn't for EJ dying. I'll be real with that. No, you can tell there's still definitely a lot of emotion with that. With six, is it six years later? Yeah, you get it, you know, like, yeah. Especially the fact that they sent me Joe straight after as well. Like, I was still mourning EJ while I was in induction, while I went to the jail house. I was still mourning and everything. You get it. Like, it, it therefore played a part, man, 100%. Hundred thousands. And why did you end up in the jailhouse? Because the day after he died, something happened. So I got arrested for investigation, but they they bailed me out. And then when they bailed me out, I got caught with drugs. So then they they reminded me, they sentenced me for the drugs, and then a couple of days before I was meant to come out for the drugs, they ended up reminding me for what I'd got arrested for the day after EJ died. So then I ended up doing a whole nother year and a month for that. Done the sentence for that as well. And then I got to come out like a week before my 18th. And I'm assuming that that, that would be building a lot of anger yeah, at that moment in time. hundred percent, hundred percent. That whole sentence I would say was just, a, it was just a manifestation. That's the only word I could ever come up with when I think about that situation. That like, me going Joe and that like, it just it just built up everything that like, everything I am today. I can't lie. Did you get any help? Did any counselling, any psychological help? What in the jealous? Yeah, yeah, to do with. No, I'll be real. Like it wasn't. I didn't need none of that. Like, do you get? It? I would like to call myself a strong-minded guy. You get? It? Like, I don't need to do. I don't need to do the fair repeating in that. Yeah, I like to just do with my own things myself. Like, you get it. I need to talk to anyone about anything. I chat to myself. Like, you get it. Literally. It's one of them ones. Oh. And then when was you released? I was released 2020. The end of 2020, still. No, the end of 2019, sorry. And what did you do on your first day out? My First day out, yeah, I think I went to a, I went to see my family, then I went to a party. Yeah, literally. 
And I guess at this time, are you still, yeah, I guess it still hasn't sunk in. You haven't been able to mourn properly, surely, while you've been inside? No, literally. Literally still. And did you go straight back to the streets? Yeah, literally. Second day out, I was straight back in store. Straight back in. I guess when you're when you're leaving the jars, you know, there's weeks to weeks where your release date's coming up, should I say. Are you are you thinking that you're going back to the streets at that stage? Are you thinking I'm I'm not going down that path again? No, obviously like for me it was like unfinished business if you catch my drift, you get. To me there was no like all of that. Walking away from the roads and that—that that was no option. Do you do you get? Because it? it's like there's no way from young, man's being on the road doing what man need to do. Do you get? Trying to get out of this shit to then lose my people, go through what man's gone through, all for no reason, and then to walk away from it with with what with nothing. I can't do that. I'm putting too many years for this shit. That's not happening. And what was your life like when you came out? When I came out, it was like, obviously it was different. It was it was a lot different from when I'd been on the roads before. What like, was the main differences? A lot, a lot of difference was the people around me. A lot of people that I'd grown up with were father and Joe. A lot of them took different paths. Some, a lot of them went jail. Mm, it was just so coming out it was like I came out to a lot of new fresh faces to new things going on new dramas new everything you get so but it's one of them was like I said I'd been manifesting it all while I was in jail so it's like everything I came out to I expected to come out to you do you get it? that was one of them ones literally and the person, I guess, who murdered your friend, what, what happened to him? He, he got arrested, store. He's in jail, he's riding life for it right now. Literally. Sit storm. He's murdered. Literally. And so we're now. You're back, you're back on the streets at, at, at late 2019, early 2020. Mm -hmm. And tell me what you're doing at the moment on a day to day basis during that stage. Literally back to where I'd left. Literally, I was on the market every day. Just, literally, just doing what I needed to do. Yeah. And when did music start coming into your life? Music. I mean, real music, up until that point, music had no factor in my life at all. Like music, I'd never seen music as a path of anything that, I don't know, nothing to do with music. I just used to listen to it. That's it, you get it. It's only when, while I'd been in jail, obviously, one of my people started doing the music thing, and then I could see that he was doing his thing, that he was all on the radio and that, you get it. At a point where I don't know what was going on, I'm just looking on the re radio and I'm seeing re re re. Do you get it? So it's like raw. So obviously when I come out, I still didn't have that sort of ambition for music at all. But when I started going around the people that was doing music for my block, that's when it's like I see how it was affecting them. Like they were actually still taking it serious. Then when I first went studio with my people, that's when man. That he got man to do the music thing. He told me that write something, get yeah, like see what you can do and that it. So I thought, fuck it, just write a little something, something, something. Just recorded it. These man said, yeah, it's hard, you get it. So ended up shooting a video, releasing it and that. But even when I released it, like I just thought it was just probably gonna be one of them ones, you get it, like do a one, two K, you get it, keep it moving, man. It was actually, it was actually doing this thing you get. So from there, that's when I was like, this music option, this music seems like a bit of a, you get it. This might be a little bit of a way forward, but even at that point, the music thing wasn't where it was now. Like the industry wasn't where it was now. So it was just the avenue. It was just a, a thought you get until I went back to Joe. 
What did you go back to jail for? I got recalled. They recalled me for my first cement store. What was you recalled for? They found me, they found a, they found a blade on me store. But they didn't find a blade on me, they found it local to me. And they just assumed on it. So they just recalled me for bad behavior. And then when I was in the jail, I was at that point, HMP. Our HMP is more, it's more like relaxed than YOY. So it's like, I just used to basically do nothing because I was in HMP. I used to just step out, back out a newspaper, smoke my vape, drink a tea on the landing, go back to my cell, watch some Hollyoaks and go to sleep. You get it? So then I started actually writing bars. So then when I started writing bars, I used to step out in the yard and spray it to the man them. The guys used to say that, right, you get it, like, you're actually hard. So then that's when I started just, that's when through my whole sentence in the HMP I'd done a year, I just started banging out bars, bars, bars. By the time I left, man, I had a booklet like, Psh, this fit, like, you get it. Then boom, just took it to the studio. When I come out, I come out. Then when I come out, obviously, these times, basically my whole block got swept up, basically. In some whole, whatever, conspiracy, whatever. As well, for the people who don't aware, aren't aware, what, what do you mean when you say swept up? Like, that, that they just, they, they, they done a conspiracy, innit? They just, in one day, they just hit. And they just basically took everyone, basically. They just beamed everyone for conspiracy. And that was it, you get So it was like, at the point, at that point, it was like, it was basically just me on the road, me and a couple. Couple man, yeah. So then it was just like, cool, like what can man really do now? That like, it's like, man could stay doing what man do and catch the same conspiracy that man just watched man this whole bit go through. Or man can try to switch it up and try to do something down the right path as well. Can't bear in man. Even though man, 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 man acknowledge man's a smart you and that, bro, but man ain't got the. My name got the necessities to fall back on, though. Like the GCSEs and them things that you get. So it's like, music just, it just ended up becoming the only way. Like, this is, that's, you get, like I always say, like, it just turned into man's job, basically. Where do you reckon you want to be in Rondo if, if, if you never did music? I'll be in jail. I'll be in jail, storm. 100,000%. Dead or in jail, I can't lie. One thing I say about the music, the music taught man a lot as well. It taught man to, to actually know what man's doing out here. Do you get it? Before the music, I was, I would say I was more, I was more reckless. I was more like, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really think about that. But I'll just do it. But since the music's come, it's like, man, I have to think twice now. Do you get it? Especially being a bait face rapper as well. I have to think three times now before I do something. You do you have to look over your shoulder everywhere you go? Yeah, that's yeah, of course. Anyone that's anyone that does road, the answer should be yes. Do you get it? That's just that's mandatory. Do you wish you you wasn't doing road or you never got involved in this life? What do you mean? Do you do you wish you had it ended up in situations that you Oh, 100, yeah. 100,000 percent. 100 million store. If I could go back and switch it, like, I would be the most well-behaved you in class. I would have done that everything I needed to do. I would have done the lidge thing properly. I would have actually done it and got, I ain't, I ain't really got a chance. I ain't had that chance. Like me, you get it. If it wasn't for music, I'd be in a maze. You get, I'm sure a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people that's even picked up a camera to go shoot drill music. If it wasn't for drill music, they would be in a maze. Do you get it? So it's like, it's therefore, it's therefore more positive than people make it seem so. Well, would you say, I guess, with the mainstream, it has such a, a bad stigma? Because me, the problem with it is because people try to make drill into something it's not. Do you get it? You cook that. I'm sorry, but it's just not that. Do you get it? 
draw started off, it was something for the streets. Like, it was, it was, it was, it was for the streets to get, like, and now it's just become for everyone. It's like, anyone could just slap on a valley these days and just say, yeah, man's young, stab it. Just that the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get it? It's like, it has no, it just don't make sense. I'll be real, the joke seems to me don't make sense. It don't make sense at all. It don't make sense. And do you think with your music, because like I said, when I've listened to it, albeit I think you're massively talented, the, the, the lyrics, the, the, what you're talking about, can never be, I feel like, played on the radio. No, but that's, that's I'll be real, it's slight intentional because I'm not a mainstream artist. A lot of people see me as a mainstream artist, but the reality is I am not a mainstream artist yet, do you get it? So it's like, even though people see me as a mainstream artist, like when it comes to my fans and that, I know what they want, do you get it? They want the whole, they want this tribe, right? They want to be able to get walking out of bed on vaults, do you get it? So, as a Joe artist, as someone who makes Joe music, whose fans are Joe fans, I'm going to continue to make Joe until it's that time, do you get it? When it gets to the point where it's like, you know what? It's time to move on, like. I will move on, do you get it, but... Man. Especially in the scene right now where it's like, everyone's, not everyone's a joke, but it's, it's just like, can't take the scene serious right now. When do you think you'll make that switch? It depends, you know, I don't even know. I don't even know. It depends, like, when my, when my surroundings change, basically, you get it? The life I, what I speak on the beat is what I live. That's what man's living. Today, yesterday, last week, that's what man's living, do you get it? So man can't just decide to switch up how man rap without switching it the way I live. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? It's like, I can't do that. I just can't do that, do you get it? Wonder, would you say you're scared to die? Yeah, of course. Everyone's scared to die. The fuck? Everyone's scared to die. I'm just, I just put myself in positions where it's a, it's hard to say. <laughs> you think it would be, you get it? You get that? I'm not scared to die forevermore. That's incorrect. I'm not scared to die. I'm scared of dying at the wrong moment. I'm scared of dying without patterning what well, I want to pattern in life first to make sure my family is good, to make sure everything do you get. Cause this life is not, this, this, with this Jewish shit, this ain't, this is just one chapter in my life, do you get? I don't want to turn, I don't want to, I don't want to go out tomorrow and then it's just like, what, what's my legacy? I uh, call a few Jewish tunes, right, 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 just that the other one. But other than that, what more can I show for it, bro? That's not how I'm trying to go out. Do you get it? And what's the future plans with your music? Can't lie. I'm trying to be at wireless next year. I'm trying to do a lot of things, I can't lie. When it comes to music, I'm going to take it there, so I'm trying to take it there 100%. I'm just trying to sort out what I need to sort out. Rondo, right have, you, have you ever been in a situation where, I guess, You've been in a vulnerable situation where you where you where you felt like your life's been in danger. Um, no, 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 no. And, and people don't know what's it like living in your borough and growing up there all together. Yeah, it's mad. I can't lie. My borough is crazy. How would you describe it? I'm actually deep it. My bar is crazy, so it's a war zone, literally. It is a war zone. Do you get it? But at the same time, don't get it twisted. That's not me trying to say, yeah, my bar is good. Yeah. I mean, in terms of war zone, where it's like a lot of shit. A lot of shit happens that you wouldn't really usually see in other places. Like, we normalised a lot of things. 
taşını bir nomurla özdük. Gevam çamaşır içine. Taş ve avuç seyma var özdü. Görme üstü. Kadın evgen akhala alav et alavma var o. O ne çeyiz nam. Ge. Kınan yok ağabey var öz. Pişş. Ge. Is there certain parts of London that you can't go? No. Of course not. Oh yeah, no, furthermore, Lee and Grinch, I'm banned there from my tag. Other than that, I can go whatever the fuck I want. Why are you on tag at the moment, Rondo? Allegedly, I was driving. Sound, sound. What call with sound, sound. Allegedly. So, like, if you want to take this music, like, you can do something with music, man. Like, you, you're, you're unbelievably talented. Mm -hmm. But I guess if you keep doing role, if you really want to leave that legacy, I guess people would be saying, people want you to win, surely. Like, they'd they say, leave road alone, man. It's true. I hear what you're saying, but you know, it is like, I'm not there, man. I can't jump on it. I can't come to a microphone and talk someone else's shit. You get it. I can only talk my shit. You get it. And if I wasn't doing road, I wouldn't have no talk to shit. But what the fuck am I talking about? Shit to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. So it's like, it's, it's, it's political, I can't lie, it's political. It's one of them ones. But, inshallah, man, hope one day, man is able to look back on all this and be able to say, oh, you know what? Man, I don't want man to do. Man made it up. Everything, everything I went through, no matter what it was, it was worth it. Yeah. Man. That's all, man. That's, 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 that's all man really want. And if you had one wish here, Rondo, what would that be? That my nigga was back, that EJ was still alive, that you can see that he was here to go through everything that man's gone through, the blocks gone through, all the progression, all these experiences that man's had to go through about him and that, that he got to be there. So, that's one thing. And you're 21 now, yeah, Rondo. And how many of your years have been behind bars? Say like, uh, say four years. That's insane, man. And you're only 21. That's what I'm saying, man. It's my story. I'll be real. The prison, prison. That's another thing that that made me who I am today. So, I can never take away from it. I regret it, but I don't regret it. If you know what I'm saying. And uh, I just wanted to change to fire in the booth. Um. Why was that taken down? And how much of your music is taken down? It's a joke. It's a lot of music is taken down. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, they just... I felt, you know it, I'll be real, I know it is. It's because of the things man say. You know, man, it's changed, do you get it? But it's to that point, but they're just taking a piss. Like, they will just take shit down now. Anything that looks like it's doing good, it's like they just come and take it. Literally. And anything that's just there, it's like they just say, leave it. Okay. Because there's tunes that I've, there's tunes that I've dropped where I've said the most craziest thing, you know, and it didn't do that much, that, that many numbers, so, and it's still up there right now. But there's tunes where it's like, I'll say a little, a little, little sound, but because of that, you can see that it's going somewhere. God. They'll take it down. No, no. Man don't hear nothing from when they take my music down. Man, man always have to hear it from whoever, whoever's posted my shit. Have to come to me and tell me, yo, it's been taken down. Or man have to just search for it and not see it to know it's been taken down. They never directly come to me and say, yo, this is what's going on. You get it? So it's one of them ones. I'm basically just fighting about with. No, basically. Another thing I want to ask as well is about your music getting leaked. I, I say that's happening a lot, man. Yeah, that one, the, you know what it is? I'm sure I've come to the conclusion is, me, I send my tunes around for video shoots and that, for when people come, I don't want people there just not knowing what they're doing. You get it? So, so I just come to the conclusion, it must just be, where am I sending it to people? They're sending it to their people and then their people sending it. And eventually it's just getting into the wrong hands. That must piss you off, surely, man. Hundred percent, but you know it is. It's one of them ones. Like, what can I really do, bro? 
until man find out exactly who it is. Like, man, don't think, it's not, trust me, it's not like that. Do you get it? Phones get searched for this shit. Do you get it? Like, it's a big thing, it's not a joke. Do you get it? But I just don't know what it is right now. Until man do, it's just one of them ones, man, I have to just live with it. Yeah. We also say if you could go back, yes, seven years, so you were what, 14, what, what changes would you make? Like, I'm going to school, I'm putting my head down, doing my education, doing legit workings, stacking my change, and that's it. I'm just investing into the future. Can't lie. I will not touch this world shit at all. I'll be wrong.